Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing the latest Mintar case from Height, the Y40. And just like its bigger brother, the Y60, it's available in black, white and red. It's currently available for pre-order and in the UK it's going to set you back just under £140. So should this be your next case, stick around to find out. To remove the tempered glass side panel, it simply needs to be pulled out from the top and then it can be lifted away. Taking a closer look at the other side panel, you notice a lot of the features from the Y60 have made it to the Y40, including this L-shaped cutouts for ventilation. If we take a closer look at this, you'll notice that part of it is functional and part of it is aesthetic. The bit over to the front of the case is actually cutouts for ventilation for side intake, while the L-shape has been continued over towards the back of the case horizontally, and this is purely for aesthetics because there's not any actual cutout here. The side panel is removed in exactly the same way as the tempered glass one, pull it out from the top and lift it away. Take a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice it's got a dust filter built into it, so you're not going to be able to remove it separately for cleaning. And you'll notice we've also got the height logo on the panel, and when you look in from the front of the case without the motherboard in, you're going to be able to see this. Take a look at the top of the case, we've got a similar L-shaped pattern here. To remove the top panel, it's a simple matter of pushing it up from the back, and it can simply be lifted away. If we take a look at the underside of the top panel, again you'll see the dust filter is built into the panel itself. At the top of the case, you're going to be able to mount up to a 360mm radiator, or up to three 120mm fans. It is important to note we don't have any mounting holes for 140mm fans or 280mm radiators. We've got a really nice cutout behind where you're going to mount your fans and radiator, and the idea behind this is it's going to give you access to all the ports on the top of the motherboard, even if you've installed radiators and fans in front of it. Take a look at the case's front I.O. We've got a power button, we've got two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. Removing the front tempered glass panel is optional. To do it, there's six screws you need to remove, and then the panel can be tilted out from the top and lifted away. Doing this will give you improved access during the build, but you just need to be careful not to put any weight on the top of the case, because the front tempered glass panel is actually structural. Moving into the main body of the case, and on the side of the case you're going to be able to mount up to a 240 or 280mm radiator, or up to two 120 or 240mm fans. At the rear of the case it's up to 120mm fan and height of pre-installed a non-RGB fan, and important to point out, this has a 3-pin connector, so you're going to have to run it in DC mode rather than PWM. In terms of motherboard support, it's up to ATX. If you do install an eATX motherboard, it will actually block the cutouts through to the rear compartment. On paper, the arcing support in this case looks to be really good, with CPU colours up to a maximum height of 183mm being supported. However, the issue I think you're going to run into is the fact that you're going to have to mount your graphics card in the vertical orientation. It's likely to interfere with a large premium mirror cooler. In terms of mounting your graphics card in the Y40, just like its bigger brother, the Y60, you are going to have to mount your graphics card vertically. And height do include a really nice Gen 4 riser card, with the colour of it matching the colour of the case. If we take a look at the back of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets. It is important to note that these are not full length brackets, so you're not going to be able to mount your graphics card horizontally. But what you are able to do is mount an add-in card behind the vertically mounted GPU. In terms of mounting your graphics card, we've got four vertical slots, and you are going to be able to mount a really large GPU in the Y40, with a maximum length of 422mm being supported. And in terms of graphics card thickness, you've got up to a maximum of 94mm, so you should hopefully be well away from the tempered glass panel. Take a look at the bottom panel in front of the graphics card, you'll notice we've got some perforations here to bring some airflow to the graphics card. Just behind this we've got another cutout which is designed for bringing the PCI cables through to your graphics card. So they're going to be able to come through directly from the bottom compartment, which should not only help with cable management, but also make the build look really clean. Take a look at the underside of the case, you'll notice that we've got two tri-style nylon dust filters. One is pulled out from the front, and one is pulled out from the back. Moving into the rear compartment, it's great to see that we've got cutouts in all the right places, and it's really good to see the cutouts beneath the motherboard actually come through from the bottom compartment, which should really help with cable management. The only slight disappointing thing to see here is the two main cutouts over to the right-hand side of the motherboard don't have any rubber grommets on them. 
In terms of drive mounting, we've got a single drive bracket behind the motherboard. It's held on with a captive thumb screw at the back, and once it's been loosened, the bracket can be tilted out and lifted away. On this drive bracket, you're going to be able to mount up to two 2.5 inch drives, or a single 3.5 inch drive. Taking a look down at the bottom compartment, you'll notice that Height have installed another 120mm non-ARGB fan set to intake, although it is possible to mount a 140mm fan here if you prefer. One thing you might appreciate when looking into this bottom compartment is we actually have cable tie-down points all the way around the outside, and this is designed to manage your cables away from that bottom intake fan. The power supply is going to go down at the back, and full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 224mm are supported. We don't have any removable brackets for the power supply, so you are going to have to insert it from the side before screwing it in from the back. And another really nice feature we have at the back is we've got some cable tie-down points for managing the cables coming from your motherboard and your graphics card. So what I want to do now is give you a look at the build I put together in the case. So the build looks great, but what about the temperatures? So our Ryzen 9 7900X idled at 45 degrees and reached a maximum of 89 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. The Tough Gaming RTX 4070 Ti idled at 28 degrees and reached a maximum of 69 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, these were also pretty good, with an average noise level of 34 decibels on idle and 49 decibels under load. So one of the first things I wanted to look at was, did the bottom fan actually improve the temperatures, in particular looking at the GPU temperature? So in the build I put together, I had maximised that bottom cooling slot by installing a 140mm fan set to intake. So all I simply did was remove the fan and re-ran the tests. So without the bottom intake fan, our CPU idled one degree hotter and there was no difference to the CPU temperature under load. GPU temperatures increased by one degree, both at idle and under load. And without the bottom intake fan, the PC was quieter by one decibel at idle and three decibels under load. So having the fan at the bottom does make a slight improvement to your temperatures. It is, however, going to come at the expense of more noise. Although importantly, there's no additional cost because the fan is already pre-installed for you. Um, so I would probably leave it in there and just reduce the speed of it down to an acceptable noise level for you. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was how restrictive are the panels, because you'll notice looking at the design of the case, I have really tried to go for the aesthetics here, and probably over airflow in the fact that there's a lot of materials over where the panels would be, and a lot of other cases would just have a mesh panel. And here you've got a lot of solid materials rather than just mesh, and is that going to influence the temperatures? So what I did was I removed the dust filters at the bottom, the panels at the top, and the side panel on the back of the case, and re-ran the thermal testing. I didn't remove the tempered glass panel on the side or the front, because doing that's just going to have a big open case, and it's going to interfere with the airflow through the case. Really what I'm trying to test here is, is the panel actually restricting airflow based on the design that I'd have gone with, purely for aesthetics. So without the panels and dust filters, our CPU idled one degree cooler, and it was two degrees cooler under load. There was absolutely no difference to the GPU temperatures, however the PC was slightly quieter by two decibels at idle and three decibels under load. So these results are actually pretty good from my previous thermal testing in other cases that actually have really good panels. Removing a really good panel, you still would expect your temperatures to maybe come down by one to two degrees. And a really bad panel, you'll find the temperatures will be coming down maybe six, eight degrees. So no difference to the GPU temperatures, one to two degrees difference from the CPU temperatures. So this is actually pretty good. The choices that I'd have made look absolutely stunning. 
and you're not really going to suffer in terms of thermal performance for them, which is really, really encouraging. And I think what I find probably a large factor that's really helping me in this build is the two large fans that I've got on the side set to intake. I did a lot of thermal testing in the Y60, and you do want those fans on the side set to intake. And actually, now that I've been able to upgrade to 140 millimeter fans, um, these fans from Lian Li, the SL Infinity 140s are really only just out. And actually, they arrived to me just as I was doing this build. And I was really hoping they were going to come on time so that I could use them rather than 120 millimeter fans because they not only look so much better, but they're going to maximize that airflow into the case. It's like a large part of the airflow coming in for both the CPU and the GPU is coming from the side and the fan at the bottom isn't really making that much difference. So try and maximize the side inflow if you can. So now we come on to my experience of building in the Y40 and in general everything was very good but there is a few tricks and tips I can give you if you want to do a similar build. The first thing to mention is that space at the top of the 360mm radiator was really tight in terms of being able to fit this 120mm rear fan in place. So if you are going to do this, make sure you install your radiator all the way towards the front of the case. If you've got any fan connectors, again, have those towards the front as well. So you're making as much space as possible for this rear fan. To get the rear fan in, I did actually have to squeeze it in and it was a really tight fit. Um, and the chances are I probably have made a few marks on the fans. So this is definitely something to factor in. Another slight issue you might run into with this being a more compact case is that once you've installed your fans and radiator at the top, you're not gonna have access to the ports on the top of the motherboard through the front of the case. Now I'd have thought about this and you do have that cut out at the top of the case, which is gonna give you some access to those ports. Although plugging them in at that stage is going to be a little bit more difficult than plugging them in at the start before you have fans and radiator installed. So my advice, particularly if you're going with a top-mounted AIO, is plug in all your other cables to the top of the case that you can at the start before installing the radiator. And it's exactly the same story at the bottom in terms of the GPU. Once you install your riser cable into the motherboard, the riser cable is going to be blocking the ports at the bottom of the motherboard. So even if you haven't installed your GPU, plugging anything into the bottom is going to be difficult. So leave installing the riser cable till as late as possible and get all your cables at the bottom plugged in before you install the riser cable or your graphics card. The final thing I want to mention is cable management. And I was expecting I was going to get myself into some trouble with this because I installed a 140mm fan at the bottom. And when you looked at the space I had at the bottom with it and the power supply installed, it looked really minimal and I had decided to use cable extensions purposely as a test for this case to see is it actually possible to manage all the cables and I was expecting to find I was going to have a really difficult time. What I didn't notice when I first looked at the case is I have lots of cable tie down points in that bottom compartment and it's designed for you to wrap your power supply cables if you're using extensions in particular round the outside of the fan and it actually does an absolutely brilliant job in terms of cable management. So that despite the fact I had used the larger 140 millimeter fan and cable extensions, I didn't have any trouble managing the cables at the bottom and the fan itself had no cables anywhere near the fan blades. So now we come on to the things I liked about the Y40 and there's absolutely loads I like about this case. I think it's a really good looking case um, the fact that we've got tempered glass on the side and the front it means you're going to have a great look in at all your components. And Heights have really gone to town with making this case look good aesthetically. The way the ventilation on all the panels, the sneaky places they have put the Height logo in that cutout behind the motherboard, down in the bottom compartment. The fine details they've made on places where they really don't need to do them, if in fact look at the design on the bottom nylon dust filters as an example and the nice little cutouts they have at the bottom of the case for bringing your PCIe cables through. Like with the Y60 I absolutely love the riser cards they've gone with for the graphics cards and the fact that they are colour matched to the colour of the case makes it really stand out. I love the fact at the top of the case the radiator is hidden in this top compartment 
and just the fans are on display. And I think the cutouts that they have at the bottom are really smart. The cutouts below the motherboard come in from the bottom compartment, meaning that all the cables are actually in the bottom of the case rather than at the back of the case behind the motherboard. And the big advantage for that is it's going to be much easier getting the rear side panel back on again. So moving on to the things I didn't like about the Y40, and we can get started with the fans. I really think height should not be including fans with this case, and actually that would allow them to bring the price down slightly, or spend a little bit more on some of the other features that I'm going to mention in this section. The reason I don't like the fans is, one, they don't have any RGB on them, and two, they've got three pin rather than four pin connectors, so you're going to have to run them in DC mode rather than PWM mode. And in general, in a case that looks this good, where the fans are going to be on display, people are going to be really particular about the fans they put in them. And having non-RGB fans that have three pin connectors is definitely not the way to go. And that money would be better elsewhere or bringing the actual price of the case down. Another area is I've actually absolutely praised the cutouts in the case in terms of their location and the cable management at the bottom I thought was brilliant. But this is another issue where I think uh, very small changes could make this case go from good to absolutely brilliant. It's really disappointing to see that there was no rubber grommets over those two main cutouts to the right hand side of the motherboard. And it is possible to see some of your cables at the back of the case through the cutouts. Um, another area that I would like to be improved upon is some Velcro cable straps. I think having these pre-installed at the back would make a real difference to this case. And when I was doing the cable management, I didn't have any difficulty with it in the fact that there was lots of cable tie down points in really sensible locations. The only slight difficulty I had was there wasn't enough cable ties included and they were quite short as well. I think there was only five included in the case accessory bag and I probably ended up using close to double that particularly managing the cables down in that bottom compartment. So again, just a very small area where a few simple changes could be made to make this case absolutely brilliant. And I suppose the only other thing to mention is the rear fan with the 360 millimeter radiator at the top. This was really tight to install and maybe just a few millimeters of extra space would be all that was needed. Although it is important to say this is a fairly large radiator and the Leandi Uni fans are quite thick, but I think that should have been factored in to when they were deciding the dimensions of the case. So now we reach the point in the review where I'm going to tell you should you go out and get the Y40. And to sum up, this is an absolutely brilliant case in terms of build quality, and I can really appreciate what Hyde have done in terms of the design of this case. I think they have spared no effort in making every single part of this case look absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love the design on the venting. Um, the dust filters, where you're not even going to see them, they've made it look good. They've hidden little logos down in the bottom compartment and on the back of the rear side panel. So they've just made every effort to make it look good. There's a lot of good design features in this case as well, with a little cutout at the back to give you access to the ports on the top of the motherboard and also the tie down points in the bottom compartment to allow you to be able to route your cables around that bottom fan, I think are really smart. So they've come up with their own innovative solutions rather than copying what everybody else is doing, and I think it works really well. The other big important thing is with all these design choices, you would be a little bit worried that the cooling and the noise levels were gonna suffer, but the thermal testing shows it doesn't. So you're getting the benefits of these looks without really any downside in terms of temperatures or noise, which is brilliant. The other important thing to factor in is the cost. £140 for a case that looks this good with this high build quality, with a really good, in fact, not just a really good, the best looking Gen 4 riser cable that you could get. I think you're getting pretty good value for money. Um, the only slight downside is it is a little bit more compact than one of the larger mid-tar cases. So again, remember I had a few issues with getting that rear fan in with the 360 at the top. And the build process is going to be a little bit more tricky in terms of fitting things in in the order you're going to have to do it in than if you were building in a larger case like the Y60. 
So if you're happy with that smaller, more compact design and you've got less space on your desk for a case, this could really be the case for you. I think personally I prefer a slightly larger case. Um, I absolutely love the fractal tarn for example, but really didn't like the tarn compact because of the compromises of going down to that smaller size. So if you are somebody who likes those more compact cases, I can 100% recommend it to you. It is a really good case and I think it offers great value for money. So hopefully you have enjoyed this review. If you are thinking of doing a build in this case, I have done a full step-by-step -step build guide in it and I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed the video, remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button as well for me. Thanks for watching.